Welcome back, guys. FM News Talk 97.1, Dave Glover Show. Welcoming back to St. Louis and the show, my very good friend, Pro Bowl quarterback for the Rams, Mark Bolger. What's up, buddy? Hey, guys. How are you? You picked a good day to come back to St. Louis. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've been down in Florida, and this weather is so awesome. Mm-hmm. It's gorgeous. So uh, you and I have been talking about it a little bit, but not a whole bunch, even just between the two of us. Uh, started with Colin Kaepernick a few weeks ago, and now it's spreading, and players are locking arms, and they're raising the fist. And so as a former pro quarterback, I want to get your thoughts, your feelings on what's been going on. Yeah, I mean, obviously the rest of everything that's going on is copycat, I think. I mean, it started with Colin, so I would just address that. I mean, it's he has an issue with with cops. I mean, it's uh, as simple as that, and the racism issue. And uh, you know, it's evidenced by his socks, where he had pigs dressed in cop uniforms. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, as long as we're up front with that, then I'm willing to have a discussion. <laughs> So, so for you, it's it's not so much about hey, it's my First Amendment free speech. I can do this. I can do that. It's let's be honest about what you're mad about. Yeah, you, you watch ESPN and everyone every everyone prefaces it with well, it's his First Amendment. Okay, we we get it. No one stopped him from doing it, and he's gonna keep kneeling or sitting or whatever he's doing. So no one stopped it. So okay, let's concede that point that he can kneel as much as he wants. Now I have a question for him. You know. We, we don't know how it was a white person, Dave, is you, all you guys there, is, is white people. We don't know how it is to be black or African American. We'll concede that point. Now, do you know how it is to be on your 13th tour in Iraq, Afghanistan? Do you know how it is to get off a boat in Normandy or Iwo Jima or Ambar Province or be away from your family for 15 years? No, e- either do I. So my point is the flag means something, the national anthem means something to these people. Do you know how it is to get up? every day and put on a police uniform and go to the fourth or fifth district in St. Louis and have people look at you and this and that and have your three kids get, you know, their names posted on Twitter, your name, your family's address, and then you're protecting the same people. No, you don't. So if you want us to respect you, then guess what? <laughs> you got to have the, you know, the reciprocal respect. And that's just what bothers me. There's no respect on that end. Mark, I was reading a an article last week from Yahoo that talked about how it was this person and, – and, and I had more of an issue with the person writing the article than even what the article was about, which is this situ- – the Colin Kaepernick situation we're talking about right now. And it said this, – this particular writer said, well, this is assuming that the national anthem is attached to the military. It's not. And this person acted like it was silly to think that the national anthem was – specifically attached to the military, whereas I said all last week, it's it's absolute. What I, I think, and I think most people think of the military when they hear the national anthem. Is that, do you agree with that? Because people are saying, well, it's not a disrespect to the military. He's, he's speaking out against something in this country, and I think that's crap. I think it's crap, too. And I think of the military, the national anthem, I think we live in the best country in the world Actually, the best country that's ever existed. And to make $19 million a year as a, uh, let's just say, average quarterback, mm-hmm. and you're sitting there complaining. Well, you know, we've gone from Richie Incognito bullying to having to get suspended for a year. So you can wear socks at practice, pigs with police uniforms on, and no actions taken. I mean, that, that's the point we've, we've gotten to. And when you, you sit there and you, you put your knee down for the national anthem and the flag, that's not courageous. They, 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 there's writers, too, Tony, that have said it's courageous. It's like a football fight in practice. That's not courageous fighting there. That going on in the back alley is courageous. But those fights are over in five seconds. What courageous? Okay, go head to Arlington. Look at all those tombstones. Or head to Jefferson Barracks. And when they're playing taps at the Tomb of the Unknown, and that Army soldier who's there 365 days a year reprimands you and you still sit there, okay, maybe you're courageous then, but I guarantee none of these guys will ever have the guts to do that. This line from this Yahoo article is, the assumption that to protest the anthem is to somehow insult our military is rather a leap. I, I don't even know how to, you don't even know how to combat that because at your games, when the national anthem is being played and the bigger the game and the bigger the spectacle of the of the anthem, it's always the military 
on display. It's the military. It's it's Marines holding the flags. It's color so, guard. Yeah, the color guard presenting the flags. So to act like it has nothing to do with the military, and when you protest the national anthem, that's what people think of immediately. Yeah, Mark. And, and, and these are the same people. Though I don't want to interrupt. I'm sorry, Dave. I, you know, my foundation, and Dave, you work with me a lot, and all you guys do. I just get passionate about this because, you know, I got buddies that you know they're in the fourth, fifth district, and then they're buying diapers. For, for 13 kids that are in one bedroom apartment last week mm-hmm. while the mom's out doing whatever. All cops aren't bad. The military, the sacrifices they make. So it, the flag, the anthem means something to these people. And I'm not just saying that out of patriotism. I know these Gold Star families, Julie Vintage, there's Todd Nicely, Corporal Todd Nicely with no arms or legs right now. Mm-hmm. They, the price they've paid, how about just a thank you? There's a time and a place, I think it's the off season. So, to sit there in a selfish way and do this once the football season starts is, to me, it just it really, <laughs> really set me off. Mark, I know you're, you're obviously not in the league anymore, but you spent a long time there and on teams in the NFL. And I was wondering what the vibe is probably like in all the NFL teams, because now it's spreading across you know the entire league, for people who respect the flag, respect the country, may have issues with it, we all do, but still honor the national anthem and the flag. Do you think there's peer pressure to join and let's all lock arms, let's all take a knee, let's all raise the fist? Oh, of course. I mean, the NFL, there's... The one thing is the NFL... I literally can say that we were colorblind because usually we were naked in the locker room. <laughs> but we just literally, we, you know, I'd have, I mean, Stephen Jackson was one of my best friends. You know, Justin Smith, I had these guys over for Thanksgiving. This never came up. And so for for this to be coming up now and everyone piggybacking, it just drives me nuts. But these coaches, I, I spent, I don't want to say the team, a, a day last week with a team. So there's head coaches under a tremendous amount of pressure. They can't say anything. I know a lot of former players, a lot of active players, that they are so they're they're as upset as I am, but they can't say anything because it's kind of a one sided deal right now that they're they're afraid. And you know, because if you oppose what they're doing and, and obviously they have their right, let's say it again the cliche to, to do this, but if you speak out like Drew Brees did, he you know, it's probably fifty fifty on, on you know, the anonymous Twitter stuff and all that that he, he was getting killed for defending you know, our men in blue and then our men and women in uniform. We're talking to uh, our good friend Mark Bolger here. So obviously everything's changed. Everything in the country has changed. But going back to your first year in the league, if someone had done this back then, would it have stood? Would would, would the, the coaches have stood for it? Would the NFL brass have stood for it? I don't think so. Um, you know, I, I think I told you before, Dave, on 9-11, you know, I was in St. Louis living in a small apartment and, I saw the first plane at the tower, and I said, oh, my gosh. And I got called in to work out a, a receiver, and I said, you guys watching what's going on? And the coach said, yeah, that stinks. Come on in. you got to work them out. So <laughs> these coaches are pretty oblivious to what's going on. But now it's coming to the forefront, I think, with the Twitter and the Facebook, and it's making them really, really uncomfortable. And I think the NFL is a you know, slippery slope right now because if you're going to allow this, what's to say, you know, I'm white. I can say it. So I'm hit from southeast Missouri, where it's a Confederate flag sock practice mm. so are you gonna you, you can't tell him he can't do that now right. because you're allowing the cops to be disrespected you, that's that you're allowing too much right now what do you think about the cowboys not being allowed to wear the patch um uh for the police officers that were killed there in dallas and if you were on kaepernick's team what would you say to a, a guy like that in the locker room it's tough, you know. So you're you're calling Kaepernick. You're the quarterback. So imagine you're a St. Louis police officer, okay? Mm-hmm. And and you're going to go in the locker room. You're going to spit in your lineman's face every day. And you're going to call him every nasty word. But yet on Sunday you're going to say, you know what? I want you to defend me and block for me. Mm-hmm. And that's what our cops do. They have to go down there for all these different movements. Stand there as they get spit on. Call these names. Have their parents, you know, their sons and daughters and their wives' names posted on Twitter. And yet they sit there and protect them because they're better than all of us. And that's why they're cops. And that's why the military are better. So it's just, it, it drives me nuts because these are the same people that are going to call for help when, when things happen. 
All right, buddy. Thanks for, for calling in. Appreciate your honesty and candor. Uh, telling us your thoughts. I'll see you after a while. Thanks, Dave. I'll see you guys. Cool, brother. Quick break. Right back. Dave Glover Show.